Hello and welcome back to Auto Social UK. Today I am in the most beautiful location in France. Wait, are we still in France? We're still in France. Okay, we're still in France. So that's a little cue that this isn't the only place we're going to be driving the Nissan X-Trail to. We're actually going to be driving across to Spain and then up to the racetrack in Andorra. Now the reason we're driving up to Andorra to the ice racetrack up there is because we're putting this through its paces. So this is the new Nissan X-Trail which I've been wanting to test out for a while now but this is actually the E-Force variant so there's a very complicated four-wheel drive system that's very unique to Nissan which I'll go into a bit more detail but I'm going to be testing it out on all terrains which I'm really excited about. So if that sounds good then please keep watching and if you like new car reviews and car content then go ahead and hit the subscribe button. Let's kick things off with the design. The all-new X-Trail is still very recognisable, but the styling of the outgoing model has been sharpened to give it a more modern, premium look. It also features the brand's slim lights and new front badge to tie in with the rest of the electrified range. Moving on to the interior, the X-Trail feels nice and solidly put together. The dashboard makes good use of textured, soft-touch plastics, and the switches are tactile. In fact, while you can find some less desirable scratchy plastics, they're all hidden down low and you'll have to search for them. The screens are both clear and easy to read. I've also found them to be a much more appealing colour than in the screens of the Qashqai that I tested. Many will be pleased to know that the climate control still has physical dials. It's still available in both five and seven seat configurations, offering a convenient option for days out with extended family or friends. This new generation of car has been made wider and taller than the previous model, giving extra interior headroom and shoulder room. One of the car's batteries, however, is mounted on top of the rear wheels, so space in the third row is for children and occasional short trips. The standard third row of the Sorento is more accommodating. One thing that the Nissan X-Trail has always prided itself on is practicality and that definitely hasn't changed with the new generation of car. Now these rear doors actually open at a full 90 degree angle. That makes it so easy to load things like child seats inside. And once you are inside, the practicality continues. You've got a sliding rear bench to give you more space for the seventh passengers or you can have some extra space in the back here. You also have heated seats in this top spec model. You've got a USB and a USB-C charge port, and you've also got these handy little sunshades. As for boot space, well, that entirely depends on spec. Mild hybrid models get the most space with 585 litres. This e-power drops to 575. And if you get the third row, that reduces space to just 485 litres. Now, none of these are particularly amazing for the class, but they're by no means bad. The entry-level car is a mild hybrid. That version is badged the VC Turbo, and it gets its power from a 1.5 litre turbocharged petrol engine and a 12 volt hybrid system, which helps to boost efficiency. In total, it gives you 161 brake horsepower, so it should be more than enough for normal driving. But let's get stuck into the nerdy stuff, e-power. Exclusive to Nissan, e-power is a unique approach to electrification offering the EV drive feeling without the need to recharge. This time, the 1.5 litre engine is still there, but it never actually interacts with the wheels directly. In fact, it works a bit more like a petrol generator, charging two batteries at the front and then four wheel drive in the rear, which in turn gets the wheels moving. Having never actually driven an E-Force car from Nissan, a few things have really surprised me about this car, really pleasantly surprised me. Now to me, this drives like an electric car with all the benefits of electric cars, the fact that it's quiet, there's a lot of limited kind of the road noise has really been kept to a minimum. And I thought that might be because of the drivetrain, but actually when I heard one of these cars from the outside, it was slightly noisier than I was expecting. So it goes to show that they've obviously really sound insulated it. 
And then there's the gears and kind of the automatic gearbox. I'm so surprised at just how smooth it feels. It barely feels like it actually has gears. Now I did double check and it does have the ECVT gearbox, but you don't feel it change at all. So whilst quickly I've swapped over and James has been doing his piece to camera whilst driving, I thought, why don't I tell you guys how I am in the back of the Nissan X-Trail because that's going to be really important to potential buyers because the reason that you're buying an X-Trail is going to be what it's like in the back. And actually, it's really quite impressive. Now, the lovely thing about the X-Trail is I feel like you can see it from here. There is a lot of visibility. These windows in the back are really wide and that means even if I was a little person, which I'm not, I'd still be able to see out of these big windows. And they've also got blinds, like I mentioned, which is really handy just to have those built in. And it's just very, very comfortable. Of course, when you go on these trips and they explain everything about the cars and they tell you all of the technology, and of course they say things are probably a little bit more impressive than they actually are. And they did say that it has an incredibly smooth drive. Now, this is one thing that I've not found to be exactly true. It is a little bit unsettled, especially when you're driving on kind of slower roads around town. When you get out onto a faster road, the ride does settle down a little bit. Now, one of the reasons I think this might have increased is the fact that this car does have pretty big wheels. So that probably is contributing to the slightly fidgety ride. Steering, when you have it in the normal mode, is probably a little bit lighter than I'd like. But as soon as you pop it in sport, it becomes a lot more responsive and just a bit firmer and better to drive. So I promised you some proper off-road driving, right? Well, it doesn't get better than the circuit at Andorra. The best thing about the X-Trail is it's set up for all weather. It's gonna have your back in every condition. So I'm gonna show you some ways which this car is incredibly impressive in its handling on ice. During this real world experience, we found out that the X-Trail has been specially developed with all terrain. With E-Force, the torque is distributed to the front and rear to maximise tyre grip according to the road surface conditions and the vehicle's situations, while braking is individually controlled for each of the four wheels. Thanks to this precise control of the twin motor system and the brake torque vectoring capabilities, the vehicle maintains the right course, whether the road is wet, oily, slippery with wet leaves, or in this case covered in snow and ice. The innovative E-Force all-wheel drive system was conceived for use on either Nissan's pure electric powertrains, or in this case, the E-Power system. So as previously mentioned, the driven wheels are powered purely by electric motors, fed by the battery, and that produces a faster rear torque response. In fact, it's 100,000 times faster than a mechanical four-wheel drive system. Well, what an experience. I have been seriously impressed with this car. It's so good on road, but also on snow and ice. Thank you so much to Nissan for this experience. It has been fabulous. If you are interested in a Nissan X-Trail, then you should definitely check one out. And if you like content like this, then please don't forget to go ahead and hit the subscribe button. Until next time, guys, see you later.